What's up friends? I got a brand new video for you today and this is going to be the last video of 2022 and I was trying to think of a final video to come out with this year. Um, I'm just going to do a recap of some of my favorite camera gear that I covered. Basically, it was nonstop. There was so much stuff that was released and we even hit 200,000 subscribers this year. So that's pretty cool. But I'm just going to talk about the things I like this year as well as make some predictions for 2023. And I feel like every month there was some new camera lens coming out. And instead of killing myself this year, I decided just to focus on the things I really wanted to review. And I also tried to branch out and do a little bit more smartphone photography this year. And I started the year off with the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. And out of all the phones that I shot with this year, I'd say that this is arguably the best camera system on any smartphone that I use this year. And it has a 12 megapixel ultra wide, 108 megapixel wide, 10 megapixel 3x telephoto as well as that crazy 10x telephoto camera and like i usually do i try and do the pro camera versus smartphone portrait shoot and this has hands down one of the best natural looking portrait modes that i've seen next to the iphone and the images i got from this were awesome even when pixel peeping i was able to see some nice subject isolation as well as background blur and i think it's one of the nicest designs too it's not a crazy protruding camera bump in the back it's got nice just small individual camera lenses it's really nice and clean yeah, and then things were a little slow for a few months until Fuji dropped a huge camera, and that was the X-H2S. And I'd say that this was probably my favorite Fuji camera that came out this year. It was a big release, and this has a 26 megapixel stack sensor, and that's what makes it special. It's insanely fast readout speed, makes it incredible for high-speed photography as well as video because there's such little rolling shutter and the camera can shoot 4k 422 up to 120 frames per second it also does 6.2k open gate which not many cameras offer and i hope some cameras will start having that because it's really nice to get that full sensor um, i've had a few clients this year ask me well a few clients for the last couple of years asked me for vertical and horizontal video and with open gate you get a lot more information at the top and bottom of the image so you can easily crop for a 9 by 16 or a 16 by 9 I overall love the image coming out of that camera, especially now they've added F-Log2 for more dynamic range. And I'd love to see this sensor in other Fuji cameras, but maybe they're just gonna preserve it for the X-H line. But all that said, how awesome would that sensor be in like an X100? And then not long after that, Sony actually dropped three ultra wide lenses for APS-C. So 11 F1.4, 15 f1.4 and then the 10 to 20 f4 power zoom they were all awesome little lenses i really love the 15 millimeter a lot it's nice light small super sharp but i do feel like these lenses are kind of expensive especially for aps-c but obviously you're going to get the best image quality the best autofocus when compared to a third party lens at the same focal length and speaking of aps-c sony actually didn't update the a6000 line like i thought they were going to but they did come out with an FX30, which is an APS-C version of an FX3. I played around with it at some Sony events, but I didn't really have enough time to make a review. Another APS-C lens I really liked this year was the Viltrox 13 mm f1.4. And I reviewed that for the Fuji system and I shot that on the X-H2S. And I was actually really impressed with not only the image quality, but just the autofocus, it was super good. And I'm saying this because it's better than most of Fuji's own lenses. And I have a weird love-hate relationship with Fuji lenses because the autofocus is good on some and not on others. It's kind of inconsistent when you're looking at other lenses, but this little Viltrox was actually pretty cool. Super odd focal length. I don't think Fuji really has anything like it. A 20 millimeter full frame equivalent F1.4. But I just thought I'd throw this in the list of gear because I actually really like this lens. And while we're on the Fuji, they also released the X-H2 shortly after the X-H2S. And then later this year, they also released the X-T5. And although those are great cameras, I really don't feel like they stood out to me the same way that the X-H2S did because I feel like Fuji just set the bar so high with that camera. But the X-H2 and X-T5 both have the same new 40 megapixel X-Trans 5 HR sensor, super high res, and they have pretty much the exact same specs except the X-H2 does ProRes and the X-T5 doesn't. And then the flip screen versus the tilt screen. And the X-T5 is very similar in body style to the X-T4. They just took that flip screen off and put it back to a tilt screen. And the last big release I covered this year was the Sony a7R5. And this camera blew my mind. The sensor, the image quality is awesome. The sensor is pretty similar to the a7R4, but it's a 61 megapixel full frame sensor. And this camera has way better processing. It's better in low light than the a7 IV. But what's amazing about it is it has a dedicated AI processing unit for the autofocus. So subject detection, tracking, it's way better than anything I've ever used. That AI processing engine has like pose estimation as well as all these tracking modes cars, planes, trains, animals, birds, insects. And they also added a new four axis flip out tilt screen. So now no one can complain. 
you get either an articulating screen or a tilt out screen, whichever you like. And I really enjoyed shooting with that camera. Although I didn't get to review this this year, Sony did come out with the 24 to 70 F 2.8 G Master Mark II. And I didn't get one at launch, but I did have one the whole time I was working on my A7R5 review. So I shot a ton of extra stuff that wasn't even in that review. And so I have a separate review coming out on the 24 to 70 G Master Mark II. That'll be out earlier next year. Oh, and before I forget, Canon actually released the R6 Mark II, and that was last month. And although I don't cover a lot of Canon stuff, they actually sent it to me. So I'm shooting this right now with the Canon R6 Mark II. You can see what that looks like. I wanted to take some time off, but unfortunately I've got this camera to review. I only have it for a, another week or so. And I've been relentlessly working on a review. I shot a lot of awesome stuff. And all the problems that people had with the original R6 are kind of fixed in this camera. It's got a higher resolution, 24 megapixel sensor. It's got no video record limits. The autofocus is better. The IBIS is better. And uh, that review is going to be coming soon. And I actually think it might be better than the a7 IV, but we'll have to wait and see for that video. Okay, so this video is getting a little bit long here. So we're going to probably end it here for my favorite things of 2022. But looking to 2023, there's going to be a few predictions here. A few of these things are rumors and what we can expect to see and a lot of these things are kind of just going based off the last time they released so i think that sony will probably have to update the aps-c line those a6000 cameras came out in 2019 so the a6d100 the 6400 and the 6600 we're probably going to see an update to those because this will be going into the third or fourth year um, they've got to update that sensor it's got to have better rolling shutter performance 4k 6d as well as 10-bit video of course these cameras are going to be updated with the new menu uh, it's going to be touching the menus but i also heard a rumor of the a7000 where it would be like an a7 body with an aps-c sensor i don't know if that's going to come out but it would have better cooling better ibis more room for that stuff so yeah i'm hoping we'll see those cameras this year aps-c is not dead it's just taking a little break I'm also assuming that Sony will probably come out with an A7C Mark II. It would make sense on release. It came out in mid 2020 and it's got the old technology from the A7 III. And so I assume it's probably gonna get like an A7 IV sensor, probably the same specs and same features. Maybe they'll add some of that A7 R5 AI processing in there. I don't know. And then there's rumors that Canon will probably release an R5 Mark II since 2023 would be its three years in on the R5. And if they do, they'll probably do a resolution bump. I don't know, maybe not. They'll probably come out with a faster readout camera, better thermal control, so no overheating issues, recording limits. Um, the R5 already has crazy specs, so I, it'll probably just get some tweaks. And then lastly, we'll talk about Fuji to round up my predictions. X-Pro4 and probably an X-100 six they were both released a few years back and they'll probably get that 40 megapixel sensor but it would be really awesome if they drop the stack sensor that 26 megapixel stack sensor into like an x100 i think that'd be really cool anyway that's gonna be it for this video i just talked for a super long time thanks for watching we hit 200,000 subscribers this year uh i hope that you guys enjoy your holidays this year i only have a couple days and then we're back at it but thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. I'll see you guys in the next one. This mic makes me want to talk way longer. I feel less awkward. This is here, but I just really want to cover. And I just want to cover some of the favorite things, not all the things. Some more smartphone photography. Smartphone photography. It has a 12 megapixel ultra. The XH2X. I don't know why I'm using this mic, but I feel like it's easier for me to talk when I have a mic like this. I have something to, somewhere to put my hand. On Fuji, they also released, released, <laughs> that they didn't give the X-H5, wow. Pretty much the same that's in the A7 IV, R4. Dang, I messed up. All our Fasto autofocus, Fasto. And uh, yeah, you can see what it looks like. <laughs> the autofocus is, is good. You don't have to really worry about it on this camera.